Hey, my good friends, Sam Haymart for Test Driven TV. I'm up here just outside Seattle, Washington, getting my very first seat time in the Honda Civic Type R. Now, if you're an auto enthusiast or if you're a Honda enthusiast, this is the holy grail, man. This is a car that we have not been able to get in the United States for decades. We've been watching the enthusiasts around the world driving this thing and enjoying its goodness from afar. Well, this year, Honda's finally bringing in the 10th generation of the Civic and the 6th generation of the Civic Type R right here before us in the United States. So this is my first drive today on the track and in the mountains here outside Seattle. My first driving impressions coming right up. Now I know everyone's probably excited to see how this thing looks and sounds going around the track and driving, driving impressions, all of that good stuff, but we have to talk about styling obviously because this is quite different from any other Civic that we've seen. Now the Type R starts with the five door built in the UK, exclusively this body style and as you can see here it's got a completely different front end from the standard Civic as well as the Civic Si and that starts with a hood here that's got this big scoop. It is not an intake scoop, it is not an intercooler scoop, that is strictly for engine bay cooling. When we get under the hood here in a minute, you'll see that that just feeds air down into the engine compartment. And since we're talking about feeding air, let's look down here at this front fascia. This grill is unique. Right here along the top, it's got an extra air inlet along with the inlet down below for radiator cooling. Down in the lowermost part of the fascia, you've got a larger inlet down there for the intercooler, big intercooler down there. Also different here are wider fenders. You've got quite a bit of extra width here that house those 20 inch wheels. Huge, huge wheels on a car this size. That's why we've got 30 series tires. And through those you can see the huge 13.8 inch Brembo brakes up front. Big Brembo brakes in the back as well, but they're beautiful to look at. And as you can see, those fenders really do wrap around those wheels and they've got a negative offset, which is the reason they don't quite have that deep dish look. And we'll get to the reason for that a little bit later when we start talking about handling and the special front suspension we've got here. Aerodynamics, a very important part of the package. So not only do we have the wider fenders, which help get the air around these wider tires and wheels, but we've got this body package on the lower half down here that includes this black plastic that looks like carbon fiber with a red accent stripe all the way around this car. As you see, it wraps around here. A brake cooling duct is right down here in the bottom. Here, you've got a duct that routes air into the air curtains that go around those tires. As we come around the corner here, we've got a winglet, which is a form of a vortex generator that helps get that air around those tires when you're going at high speeds on the track. That lower body package continues down the side rockers with winglets again, just before the rear wheels. As you can see here in the back of those front fenders, there are vents down there. Now those vents really aren't functional in any significant way. We talked to the engineers and the designers and they basically said that they study different ways of actually doing that to make them functional. And what we end up with there is a little bit of a mild extraction coming from the wheel well, but nothing significant. It was mainly about creating a nice look and a way to finish that wider fender back into the body. Coming around here, you can see that lower ground effect does wrap in nicely to this rear. And this is really a lot to talk about back here. And I guess we can start with this wing because damn, man, this is a big ass wing. And it's a beautiful one at that. It's always been a staple of the Type R and they've done a nice job of creating both a black and a body color element here that ties together with a few different pieces. They've actually told us it's slightly smaller than before on the previous generation. Of course, we wouldn't know here in the United States because this is our first time seeing it. Up on top of the hatch, there's actually some vortex generators up there that help with the aerodynamics as well and sort of create a nice clean airflow back here as you're going at high speeds. Type R logos, red Honda logo here on the deck, just as there is up there on the front grille. Down here on the lower fascia, of course, there's another big topic of conversation, this exhaust tip. We've got this triple center exhaust, and the thing to point out here is that the two outer exhaust pipes are the true exhaust outlets. That's where the majority, if not all, the airflow is. That center pipe is actually more of a resonator, and that helps this thing keep from having drone when you're driving around town, but when you really get into it, uh, that really helps with some of the ancillary airflow and some of the sound such that it really does make this thing the best of both worlds. You really hear the sound when you're gunning it out on the track or well, maybe in your neighborhood. Uh, but for the most part, 
those outer two exhaust tips are where your exhaust is coming from. It's a pretty nice looking element and with the splitters down there in the lower fascia, it all really ties into a theme here that I think works pretty well. As they say on MTV Cribs, this is where the magic happens and it might as well be the bedroom because this is it. Bright red here, two liter direct injected turbocharged engine, super high output, 306 horsepower and 295 pound feet of torque. Now this thing redlines right around 7,000 RPM. We've got a lightweight flywheel, a special close ratio six speed manual transmission and a limited slip differential. This is the powertrain that dreams are made of for the Honda Civic and it's rated at 22 MPG city and still 28 MPG highway. And we're gonna find out really what this thing's about here very shortly when we get to the track. So we've got a two liter version of Honda's turbocharged four cylinder engine, super high output, 306 horsepower. The question of course is, how does it go? Woo! Woo! <laughs> oh my God. Yes, yes, yes. Whee! Let me slow down and get the legal speeds here. Slow down, the sign says. I just got a flashing sign that says slow down. How about that? Well, it's quick and this thing's got torque, 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 torque. This engine, the first thing I've already noticed about it is very little, if any, turbo lag, and that's because of a number of things they've done to it. Primarily, the valve lift on this has been tuned, especially to open up the valves more in the mid-range, which pushes more exhaust into the turbo, which spins it up faster, which really gives you that torque right there in that mid-range. <laughs> and it's very refined, of course, like you'd expect from a Honda engine. Now granted, the red line's only right around 7,000 RPM, unlike some other Honda engines in the past, but you don't need to go there. This thing's got a lot of mid-range power and torque around town, and especially on the racetrack, which we'll see here in just a minute. But at least around town, this is a car that's not only going to have that power you want, but unlike the old SI and some of the other engines in the past that were naturally aspirated, you don't have to rev this thing to the moon and back to get that power. And you can just really lay into the throttle at low RPM, and it just really takes off, man. Woo! Great. One thing about this car I've discovered already, even when you start taking these corners a little quicker, it's got a very neutral attitude. It doesn't feel front wheel drive at all. And these brakes, you can really get on them a lot. since we're still warming up, I haven't quite gotten into shifting just yet. But I will here soon because even though this has a lot of torque, uh, you know, you still can't just pull out of a corner in fourth gear. Now, rev matching. This has got automatic rev matching, which of course you can turn off if you don't want it. You can heel and toe manually, but this has a brilliantly executed rev matching program that works very well. All right, so here we're on the straight. 88, 97, 99, 115, and 120. That rev matching kicking in there. Kind of came into this corner a little bit on the hot side there, but the car is very forgiving. And I'm finding that at speed here, this thing really does a nice balanced job of steering with the throttle on off inputs. It's very predictable. Now that we've got some grip here, you can really modulate how this thing behaves with the throttle. Got 
a little loose there trying to break without being in a complete straight line. All right. A little better attitude here in the right ear coming out of this one. So one of the things that's come up in a lot of the test drives and a lot of the questions I'm getting from viewers is what about torque steer? Well, guess what? There is absolutely no torque steer here. This has been very well done with the dual axis strut suspension where you can lay on the throttle whether you're turning or straight and there's very little, if any, torque steer. Especially coming out of these corners under full throttle. You can still feel a little bit of squirming going on there. But overall, this is very well done when it comes to um, how this power is delivered. I don't feel any deficit here in terms of traction because we're only front wheel drive. It doesn't have the kind of understeer that you'd normally expect with a front wheel drive car. In fact, it has a lot more balance than I would have ever expected. Now granted, when you throttle out of a corner, you don't get the rear tail happy sort of feel with a rear wheel drive car that you'd have there. Even here on the highest level of damping, which is the plus R drive mode, this feels a lot softer and more compliant than say a Ford Focus RS. So I think, you know, while this is making a very nice track day car out on the highway, which is where most people will live with it, it's going to be a lot more livable than say that Ford Focus RS. I'm not really missing all-wheel drive a bit and that's something that I thought I would in a car with this power level being a front-wheel drive bias car that it is. I really believe that it would be at a deficit without all-wheel drive and I'm just not finding that. I'm not wishing for it, let me just put it that way. It's every bit as fun, it's every bit as balanced and predictable as you'd want that all-wheel drive for. And this engine is just a high revving gem with all of the enhancements that they put into it. And this rev matching really makes you feel and sound like a pro at pretty much all times. So there's that for the track. Now that we're back on the highway, I've got this set on sport mode, which is a little stiffer than comfort. Comfort being slightly softer, yet it's still plenty sporty, but sport mode dials it up just a little bit more. And here, obviously, I can feel the bumps a little bit more sharply, but even here, it's not jarring. When I dial up to plus R, here on this road, not perfectly smooth pavement. Again, not a terribly jarring ride. And that's a good comparison to some in class, like the WRX STI from Subaru, as well as the Ford Focus RS. Now, those are both all-wheel drive cars, but very comparable here. And both of those cars have a pretty jarring ride, in my opinion. Yes, you want the suspension to be stiff for the racetrack. You want it to be stiff for high-performance handling capability, maximum grip. But Honda's proving here, I think, that it doesn't have to be. And keep in mind that they've accomplished a civilized ride here with 20-inch wheels and 30-series tires. Those tires and wheels alone, in many cases, would make the ride unbearable in most cars. So the fact that this ride is civilized and quite drivable every day, even on plus R with these wheels and tires, is nothing short of amazing, in my opinion. So. This isn't a car that you spend up for and get your high performance goods and have to pay for it every day when you're driving it back and forth to work. The interior of the Civic Type R is every bit as special as the rest of the car itself. There's a lot of touches in here that make it unique, that make it the track car, that make it the race car, that make it worth the price. And that starts with these seats. These are Honda Sport seats, not Sparco, not Recaro. Even though they look very expensive and uh, very professional, these are actually made and designed by Honda, which is what they tell me the reason why they're very comfortable. And they are, unlike the Recaros and one of the competitors out there. I sat in these seats all day long today on the racetrack, driving all around 
upper northwest Washington state. And I'll tell you what, I'm not ready to get out of them. I'm very comfortable sitting here. I'm not in pain like I have been in some of those competitors. They're very supportive. They've got deep side bolstering and they have this beautiful red and black cloth and suede material here. The Type R logo is embroidered right there into the seat. And they do, of course, have those seat belt holes so that if you did put a roll bar and a full cage in here for some racing harnesses, you'd have the ability to keep these seats and retain those. They are manually adjustable, but they've got a great adjustment range for tall drivers. And because of the way they fit, even if you were a heavier driver, I think that you would fit in these seats pretty good. They wouldn't be uncomfortable because they're not so tight um, that well, like Recaro's, for instance, and one of the other competitors, I found that if you were really over 170, 180 pounds, you wouldn't be very comfortable in the car. And I think this has the range to really spread out and let you be here, even if you're upwards of 2, 225 or higher. So that's a good thing. Steering wheel here, leather steering wheel with a two-tone leather treatment. You've got red at the bottom, some nice accents. You've got a D-shaped flat bottom. And here in the center, the most important thing of all is the big red Honda logo, very specific to the Type R something we haven't seen here in the United States before and it really does distinguish this car from every other Honda we've ever seen in showrooms also you'll see here we've got red accents along with the carbon fiber print it's a very pleasing trim to look at it looks very much the price tag here and I think um, it really does fit the character of the car I think most people are going to be very happy with this interior and I've just really touched the surface here. I'm really sort of talking about the things that set this apart from the standard Civic. And lastly and most importantly down here on the center console we've got the serialized Civic Type R plaque. The serial number, build number right there on the center console for eternity. All right, my friends, there you have it for my first brief test drive of the Honda Civic Type R. So my first impressions are this. Very impressed with this powertrain, the chassis, the handling. I was fully expecting to be disappointed in the fact that it was front-wheel drive only, lacking all-wheel drive like its major competitors in the Ford Focus RS and the Subaru WRX STI. Well, guess what? They're proving it's not necessary. I didn't at one time during this day on the racetrack and out here on the mountain roads think, gosh, this would be better with two more wheels of traction. Didn't need it. And the torque steer just wasn't there. Proof positive it can be done and in a simple, reasonable way. Very, very impressive. So that said, this vehicle here stickers at 33,900 plus destination. I think that represents a very good value. So I'm really looking forward to spending a week with this a little bit later down the road when we get more time to drive the car. Having said that, the Honda Civic Si we just spent a week with made the test-driven TV I'd buy it list. This, a very good contender for that. So I'm looking forward to that test drive to see how that stacks up. Until then, click right there, subscribe to our YouTube channel. We test one or two vehicles a week and there's always something new. Or click right there, see our latest test drive. Either way, stay tuned.